9-11 Truth Movement has long honored and respected the eyewitness testimonies of the first responders, reporters, and citizens at the World Trade Center. But what about the eyewitness testimony of the first responders, reporters, and citizens at the Pentagon? Almost all of us have only heard a few selected words from among the abundant witness testimonies given by those citizens describing what they saw at the Pentagon on 9-11. The Pentagon witnesses deserve the same respect that we give to the World Trade Center witnesses. Witness reliability. When an event is seen by multiple witnesses, the most accurate comprehension of that event is known to be found by examining the totality of collective descriptions and identifying the common threads and the recurring words that the varying testimonies share. Okay, we have another person on the phone. Janet, are you with us? Yes, I am. We understand that you witnessed this plane, a plane crash into the Pentagon? Yes, sir, I did. What, tell us exactly what you saw. Well, I live uh, in a high-rise building just outside of, uh, of Roslyn, and I was actually glued to the television, and I have an office here, and it's all glassed in, and I saw a plane just coming right in front of my window, flying at a, a path that the commercial planes do not fly, uh, not coming into the direction to land at National Airport. How big was the plane? Um, it certainly looked larger. Every once in a while there's a flight path difference for smaller uh, private planes that come in. This was not a small private looking plane. It looked more like sort of a commuter type plane. And you said uh, it, was, it was sizable, yes. And then you said it was headed directly to the Pentagon. Yeah, it was heading in the direction of the airport and I thought well, this plane is way too low and there's no runway that it goes in that direction and it didn't turn at all. And I just, as soon as I saw it, I knew it was way too low and not on a flight path that I'd ever seen before living here. Okay, and what did you hear? I couldn't hear anything uh, from where I am. I just saw the plane just disappear out of my sight beyond the trees, and then I just saw massive billows of smoke. Pentagon, we were up there on the roof up there, and a guy yelled down that they bombed New York City. And I was just watching the White House just to see anything, if it could happen, what's going to happen. And next thing you know, from out of nowhere, you just saw a plane real low and just went straight. Didn't come in from high, came in real low, and just the back end of the Pentagon just blew it up. Big mushroom fire cloud. Insane. This morning when she saw what happened, can you tell me, you say that you saw a plane actually strike the side of the Pentagon. Tell me exactly what you saw. I saw a plane going down, big plane, commercial liner type, going down full speed and just inside the, the side of the Pentagon. Uh, obviously, it was going in the Pentagon purposely. And we were driving down Columbia Pike, and it just flew right over us, as I said, full speed. And I told my husband, it's going in the Pentagon, it's going in the Pentagon. And then we heard the, the huge crash, saw this fireball, and flame and smoke and... So you actually saw the plane impact the side of the building? Yes, I did. Just one plane? Just one plane. Tell me a little bit about the size of the plane. Did you see any commercial markings, any markings at all on the plane? Uh, I didn't see any marking because it was, um, we just saw the underneath portion of it. So, and it, it just, as I said, was going full speed. So, but it was a big plane, maybe 737. My husband said 747, but I, I'm not positive. I don't know for sure. But it was big, uh, definitely the kind of plane you, you, you get on when you want to fly to L.A. or wherever. I have on the telephone with me uh, Barbara, who is the wife of a friend of mine and who is an eyewitness to exactly what happened uh, at the Pentagon. Barbara, uh, can you hear me all right? Can you? Yes, I can hear you. Well, what exactly did you see? Uh, let's look at the Pentagon now as, as you describe uh, what exactly happened at the Pentagon this morning. As we were driving into town on 395, there was an exit. We were trying to get off the exit for the Memorial Bridge. Off to the left-hand side was a commercial plane that came in and was coming too fast and too low. And the next thing we saw was it go down below the side of the road, and we just saw the fire that came up after that. How large was the explosion? Uh, it was large. Was there a sound as well? Um, that I can't, can't verify because the windows were up in the vehicle. 
Was it clear to you what had happened? Yes, definitely. So you believe it was a commercial airliner that was uh, hitting the Pentagon? Yes. How low was the plane? When it was coming down? Yeah. It, it, it was coming down on uh, uh, less than a 45-degree angle and coming down toward the side of the um, 395. But it seemed awfully low to you? Yes, and fast. And when it came down, it just missed the 395 and went down below it, and then you saw the, the, boom, the um, fire come up from it. Identify yourself and tell us what you saw. Uh, my name is Ed Hudson. Uh, I was uh, coming to work at the Navy Annex. Uh, I was passing by Fort Myer and I saw a large airliner sized plane, roughly a 767 size uh, airliner. Uh, very deep descent, uh, approaching the Pentagon. As I, uh, I didn't actually see the impact, but I did see uh, you know, the, hear the blast and, and saw the smoke rising from the, from the crash later. And this was you know, just uh, shortly after hearing the news about the, the crashes at the World Trade Towers. Now, it, it did not look like that plane tried to avoid the Pentagon at all? No, it, 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 was, it seemed deliberate. It was uh, outside the normal flight patterns for a national airport. I've seen debris uh, 20 feet from where we're standing. Did, have you seen debris yeah, also? I did. Describe what you've seen over there. It just, just seemed like uh, you know, parts of the, the landing, landing carriage or possibly the, the engines. His name is Alan Wallace, and he is a civilian employee at the Pentagon. Ironically, he happens to be a firefighter who was stationed with his fire truck close to the point of impact of the plane. And he described to me exactly what the scene looked like. He looked up, he said he saw the, fl the plane about 50 feet away, screamed for his partner to run. They took off running, and Alan Wallace now takes up the narrative. At the point, at the time when I said, when I, you mean referring to when I saw the plane, when I first saw the plane? Right. There was a flash, a, a horrific crunch. There was a fireball. I came down Washington Boulevard where I ended up next to a cab that was struck by one of the street lamps. Apparently, that was knocked down from the aircraft as it was making its descent into the Pentagon. There was debris over the roadways, specifically where I was, Washington Boulevard. Okay, then let me go quickly to someone named Don Wright, who saw the plane crash into the Pentagon. Don, are you there in Washington? Yes, I am. Can you tell us what happened? Yes, it was about 9.35, and I was looking out our 12th floor windows at 1600 Wilson Boulevard in uh, Roslyn, Virginia, and I watched this. It looked like a commuter plane, two engines come down from the south, real low, uh, proceed right on and crashed right into the uh, Pentagon. Went directly into the Pentagon? Uh, that is correct. Looked like a deliberate act? A deliberate act, sir. And can you tell me what direction it came from, Don? It came, it came from the south. And about the time I saw the plane, I watched it come in very low over the trees, and it just dipped down, came down right over 395, right into the Pentagon. Don You're very Wright, welcome. an eyewitness to the crash at the Pentagon. We have an eyewitness, I think, to what happened here at the Pentagon, if you have a moment. Um, Heather Cabbage bringing that person over here. Can you tell me what, what you saw and where you were? Well, we were on Columbia Pike, um, where the um, shelter is. And all of a sudden, we, you can hear the noise coming first, and then you can feel the, sh the shaking of the building. And we just looked up out of the window, and I saw the tail end go. What size and plane? It was a, for me, it looked like a big size plane. It was definitely a passenger plane. And everything just, everything shook. And then all of a sudden you just heard this big explosion. And somebody said, my God, they hit the Pentagon. They hit the Pentagon. What's your name? Uh, Mark Eason. Thank you, Mark. Yes, sir. Our phone now, Mark Pettit. He was at the Pentagon. He was an eyewitness to what happened there today. Mr. Pettit, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you tell us what you saw? Um, yeah, I was uh, actually sitting in traffic on Route 110 uh, on my way to work. I work across the street. And it was an American Airlines plane that came in and hit the Pentagon. Um, I believe it was a 737. Um, I could be mistaken. It might have been a 707, but it was definitely a commercial plane. And about what time did this happen, Mr. Pettit? Um, probably about 9.35, 9.40. Right. Um, I saw the plane coming down. It, it actually came up 395. Um, and it just went over the horizon, and then it came back in front of a bridge where I was sitting, and I knew it was going to hit. I mean, I'd already heard about the World Trade Center, and the next thing you know, it was just a huge explosion. Um, black smoke everywhere, and all you could see was just billowing black smoke everywhere. All right. Mark Pettit, we appreciate it, and I witnessed through that airplane crash at the Pentagon.
I'm here with Michael Kelly, who was a witness to this attack at the Pentagon. I'm going to let him describe what he saw here, I guess, about 20 minutes ago with right, me, Michael right. Kelly. First of all, let me just first describe the scene. This is the west side of the Pentagon, uh, the heliport side off of Washington Boulevard. Were you driving or what? Yes, I was in the traffic on the 14th Street Bridge, uh, right at the Pentagon, tied up going into town. And I heard this plane come over my head. and It was very, very low. And the next thing I know, there was this tremendous explosion as it hit the Pentagon. I looked right, I looked over, and those, the smoke started coming up. Pieces of the plane were, and pieces of the Pentagon were falling onto the 14th Street, onto the Shirley Highway. Very scary. No Had you known about the World Trade Center? Oh, yeah, I was listening to WTOP radio the whole time. And uh, then this thing came right over my head, and uh, it plowed. It was clearly a similar situation to what happened in New York. Hey, Mike, I'm here with a familiar face, Mike Walder of USA Today. Mike, you actually saw this happen. I Tell us what you saw. I did indeed, Gordon. Uh, you know, like everyone else, I was listening to the radio to the accounts of what was going on in New York. I was listening to President Bush, and, and we were stuck in traffic. We're coming off the, the exit here, and I looked up, and I saw this American Airlines jet coming in very low, and I watched it, and it, and it clipped. I don't know if you can see it over here. It clipped this bowl. It slammed right into the building. Huge explosion. Are you sure it was an American Airlines plane? I, it, you know, we were stuck in traffic could not move. I could see the big AA, the silver jet itself. I thought it was a 737. I may be mistaken there, but there was no doubt about it. It was American Airlines slammed right into the building, and there was no doubt about it. Whoever was piloting that plane was aiming for the Pentagon. I saw the you ball of fire, and, yeah, and I saw it clip these, these uh, poles, and then the, the billowing smoke, a gray column of smoke. Witnesses described seeing an enormous fireball, then heavy black smoke rose into the sky. And I looked over to the side and, and I saw this jet coming in and it was really low. And, and uh, it was an American Airlines jet. You could read the AA on the side, silver fuselage, and it kind of disappeared over this embankment here for a moment and then huge explosion flames flying into the air and, and uh, just chaos on the road. The plane struck a portion of the Pentagon that had recently been renovated. I'm sorry, sir, your name, please? Uh, Sean Lansdowne. What'd you see, Sean? <laughs> I was sitting in my bedroom back at home. and um, Where's that, I, sir? It's right in Arlington. I'm like th four minutes, three, four minutes away from the Pentagon. Right. And I was sitting in my living room, and my building started shaking, and I knew that no, don't no plane supposed to make my building shake. Well, when I turned around and looked up, I see this plane, and I agree with the young lady that was just speaking. It was like a 757. Jamie McIntyre. And Jamie, you got very close to where that plane went down. That's right, Judy. A short uh, a, a while ago, I walked right up to next to the building where uh, uh, firefighters were still trying to put out the blaze. The, the fire, by the way, is still burning in some parts of the Pentagon. And I took a look at the huge gaping hole that's in this side of the Pentagon in an area of the Pentagon that has been recently renovated, uh, part of a uh, multi-billion dollar renovation program here at the Pentagon. I could see parts of the airplane that crashed into the building, very small pieces of the plane on the heliport outside the the the, uh, the building. The biggest piece I saw was about three feet uh, long. It was uh, silver and had been painted uh, green and red, but I could not see any identifying markings on the plane. I also saw a large piece of shattered glass. It appeared to be uh, a cockpit windshield or other window from the plane. You witnessed what happened at the Pentagon. What did you see? Uh, from my office, I was able to see um, a jet just came at a high rate of speed, um, and it just increased its speed as it got closer to the Pentagon, and then I just saw the big yellow ball of fire. Don, exactly where is your office from? Where are you watching this? Uh, we're, our office is uh, off right at St. Barnabas Road in the Beltway, so I overlook the Beltway from my office. Mm -hmm. Now, we do also have somebody to talk with us who was an eyewitness to the actual crash. He was watching from Arlington, Virginia, which is a suburb over his name, is Tim Timmerman. Mr. Timmerman, are you with us right now? I sure am. You're a pilot. Tell us what you saw. Well, I was looking out the window. I live on the 16th floor overlooking the Pentagon and in the, the corner apartment, so I have quite a panorama. And being next to National Airport, I hear jets all the time, but this jet engine I heard was way too loud. I looked out to the south, to the southwest, and it came right down 395, right over Columbia Pike. And as it went by the Sheraton Hotel, the pilot added power to the engines. I heard it spool up a little more. And then I lost it behind a building, and then it came out and I saw it hit. But I saw the nose break up, I saw the wings fly forward, and then the conflagration took, you know, just engulfed everything in flames. It was horrible. What can you, 
What can you tell us about the plane itself? It was a Boeing uh, 757, American Airlines, no question. Uh, you say that there was a Boeing, and you say it was a 757 or 767. Seven, it's seven, hard. Five, 757. 757, yeah. which American of course Airlines. is one of, American Airlines, one yes, of the uh, new generation of jets, and of right. course, it, it, uh, that, it was not. It was so close to me, I could. It was like looking out my window and looking at the helicopter. It was just right there. We were uh, told that it was. Uh, we were told that it was flying so low that it clipped off a couple of light poles on its way in. That might have happened behind the apartments that occluded my view. And uh, when it reappeared, it was right before impact. And like I said, I saw the airplane disintegrate and then just blow up into a huge ball of flames. So there was a there was a fireball that you saw. Absolutely, and the building shook, and it was, you know, quite a, quite a tremendous explosion. It had just caught the E ring on the outside. It looked like on the helipad, which is on that side. We have Don on the phone now, who was another witness to what happened at the Pentagon. Don, can you hear us? Don. Hello. Yes, Don. Uh, this is Andrea in the newsroom with uh, Mike Buchanan. What did you see? I saw the. It was an American Airlines 757, and it came in and hit the side. The hit the uh, heliport. Came, came down Columbia Pike and hit the uh, heliport uh, next to the Pentagon. I live in an apartment building on that side of the Pentagon, and it just crashed right into it. You said it was a 757. American How could you Airlines. tell? How could could you see that? Yes, I could see it. Uh huh. And my roommate is an airplane person, and he saw it, too. I mean, we saw the whole thing. Okay. Did it, it, it didn't come, come out of national? It came no, in it, from, the, uh, from the west? It came right down it, Columbia Pike. It came right down, right. Came right down Pike. Columbia low, Pike. Low and with throttles on. With the full, th like, full throttle? Yeah. He actually added power. Right he actually added power right by the Sheridan. Uh, and that's what we heard from Don as well. He added power and went straight for the Pentagon. So this was no accident. No, no. It was deliberate. This was right, aimed right at it. Dave and I are standing here, thanks to Heather Cabot, with Harry Goad, who was the Space Policy and Acquisition Division of DOD. You were on the fifth floor, That's and right. you, you saw this thing coming? I did. Tell, tell us what happened. Uh, we were just watching the World Trade Center on the Internet, and uh, I turned around, and I'm at a very large window, and I turned around and looked, and I, I saw the uh, silver uh, 757, it looked like to me, veering from the uh, registered course over the Potomac River and it had no landing gear down and it was coming very very rapidly and then it took a dive uh, maybe a couple of miles maybe over Roslyn it took a dive into this building and I saw it coming and I hollered hit the deck and everybody in the office hit the deck because they knew that the World Trade Center was on fire so so you figured this was it this was it they were coming in and uh, you know they're gonna hit a lot of buildings and this is gonna be one of them so there's no question in your mind that the pilot, whoever was piloting that aircraft was aiming for the building? He was aiming for the building, but he could have went into center court mighty easily, which would have really done some damage, and I don't know, but whoever hit the outside, God bless him, because that's, uh, that, that also is an area of the Pentagon that's going to be under renovation. We've already done one wedge, and we've moved a lot of people out of this wedge here over there. Yes, hi, Buck and Andrea. We're on the 22nd floor of the USA Today Tower. Over my left-hand shoulder is the Pentagon building with the billowing smoke. To my right here is Joel Suckerman. He is the assistant managing editor of usatoday.com. On his way to work, he witnessed the plane crash into the Pentagon. Joel, tell us what you saw. Well, while listening to the radio reports of the World Trade Center uh, problem, uh, there was a sonic boom, and looking straight ahead, there was a jet, what looked to be an American Airlines jet, probably a 757, uh, and it uh, came screaming across the highway. It was uh, Route 110 on the west side of the Pentagon. The plane went west to east hit the west side of the Pentagon, immediately flames uh, uh, were, were streaming up into the air. There was white smoke, and then within seconds, thick black smoke. Everybody got out of their cars. People were shocked. Describe the first plane again. You say it was a commercial jet. Do you know how many engines? I did not see the engines. I saw the body and the tail, and it was a silver jet with the markings along the windows uh, that spoke to me as an American Airlines jet. This was not a, a commercial, a, excuse me, a, uh, a business jet, right? It was not a Learjet, uh, Gulfstream, something like that. It was, a, it was a bigger plane than that. As we started getting away, there were people on the road who were very close to the exit, and they were saying, oh, my God, did you see that? It was an airplane. It was an airplane. Just came, they kept saying it was a big airplane. I'm Captain McCoy, Engine Company 101B. We're... Um 
coming down 395 at the time of the accident. We saw the plane come into the um, Pentagon. In this area, um, we're used to seeing planes, okay, coming in low all the time. And this particular plane was awful low. And as we were coming down on a 395, it came across in front of us and it was low, too low. And all we saw was it, it banked. And when it banked, it went down into the Pentagon. After it hit, we saw the big mushroom cloud of smoke. I was able to tell that it was a jet airliner commercial. As it was coming in, and I watched it come right in. And so I was right, what kind of plane was it? American Airlines. It came, it, it came streaking down and hit, and it hit short. Just, it didn't go into the top of the Pentagon. It came like in short, and then it, it, everything sprayed up, like a fireball sprayed up on the wall. And I saw it, I saw it right come out of the side of my eye first. And then it went right in front of me. Went right past me, you know. Um, like I said, the thing that shocked me the most and stays with me now is the severity of the intention, the, the, the idea of the angle that when it, when it came in was coming like right in hard, you know, uh, to, hit, uh, to hit the Pentagon. Zaziz El Halou, he uh, works right up the uh, street here from our studios here. And uh, you were headed to work this morning with your girlfriend. And tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Uh, just around 9.08, 9.15, mm -hmm. just hitting uh, 110 south, actually north. And uh, it was just amazing, something you only see in the movies, that a huge airplane looks to me like a 757 American Airlines, probably flying around 60 to 70 yards on top of my car. Oh, my and goodness. Everything was shaking. And the next thing we saw, that airplane crashed in. The Pentagon. The Pentagon sucked in the airplane, so we didn't see any more parts or any pieces of the airplane. A piece around. of the aircraft actually landed and broke your windshield, as I understand it. Uh, just landed by the car. And, uh, Unbelievable. This is one of uh, now, now, Aziz, in, in this situation that took place today, what did the other motorists do? I mean, did everybody stop their cars and get everybody out? Everybody stopped and they got out from their car and they started running left or right, and we had big panic at that time. Let me see this again. And this is uh, uh, just, it, it's, it, it's almost macabre to have a, a piece of, of something like that uh, in your hands, something that is a part of such a national, uh, international world tragedy that, that took place on this day. And you and so many other motorists saw this thing happen today. And most of the cars, they had the front windshield broken because of the noise of the airplane. Mm. And just the time I turned my head to the left, it seems like uh, the pilot or the person who was in charge of the airplane put full torque or throttle to the airplane. It seemed like it was going faster as it went into it. Exactly, yeah. It was, and especially, as I mentioned to you, I do fly small airplanes mm -hmm. occasionally, and it looked to me as someone professional, especially when you maneuver and turn the airplane, it takes you a few seconds to put the wings equally subtle. But, but it, didn't one, seem, it didn't seem to you like that this was someone, this wasn't a pilot who was struggling for control of the aircraft. This is someone who was Heading it right in there? Exactly. That I wonder if you if you sense that it's going to take a long time to get over. Unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> I hope they will stop it immediately and uh, the world come up to a peace. And... Aziz El Halou, thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. you coming by. I, I saw that plane coming right at me, but he, he picked up a little bit, and the plane came right over top of me. I could see all the windows on the right side going by. We were in the, uh, sitting in the office. And all of a sudden, we heard some rumbling. Something is kind of hitting us. Very imminent things could happen. So uh, we look at each other, and it really uh, the noise is un unbearable. And at the last moment, my brother uh, jumped out the uh, office. We I heard about the very weak jet sound. Looks like just up to here. I just look at the outside, big black wings coming that way and then I just running out and then you know two three seconds boom coming in at a shallow angle like it was landing right into the side of the Pentagon and ended up right in front of the Pentagon on route 27 which stuck in totally standstill traffic just sitting dead still on the highway and basically without warning there was just the sensation of something coming over the top of us it seems the plane was so low that it hit a light pole uh, that was um, just um, on the edge of the highway, on the, on the far side there, um, before it came over the highway, it clipped this pole, which I heard ended up 
being knocked over and hitting a taxi, which was near, near my car. My name is Lloyd England. 9-11, I was driving my car on my way home. This airplane flew over top of my car. It was real close. Something glass, a loud, a loud noise happened, and the pole came through the dashboard right through the car. I, I stopped the car in the, in the middle of the street. It didn't stop straight, it st stopped at an angle. Over 180 witnesses are on record describing what they saw at the Pentagon on the morning of 9-11. 127 witnesses said they saw a large plane. Seven witnesses identified the plane they saw as a Boeing 757. 26 witnesses identified the plane they saw as an American Airlines plane. 63 witnesses saw the plane impact the Pentagon. 13 witnesses saw the plane hit one or more of the five downed light poles. Four witnesses saw the plane hit the fence and generator trailer. The Pentagon witnesses deserve the same respect that we give to the World Trade Center witnesses. Eyewitness testimony is one of the big factors at the Pentagon. Individual eyewitness testimony is subject to distortion, but the cumulative weight of independent eyewitness testimony of large numbers of people tends to have high validity, and importantly, it has a long history of being recognized as valid by the courts. No plane theories at the Pentagon started up mere weeks after the event with Terry Masson, a French journalist who postulated truck bombs before revising this to a missile attack. The only evidence he went on was the supposed lack of plane parts on the lawn and early estimates of the size of the hole in the Pentagon wall based on photographs that were heavily obscured by sprays from water hoses. Notice the entire ground floor is blocked off here by the water spray. This is a famous photograph. And Ken Jenkins was commenting, this photograph right here is probably the genesis of no plane theories at the Pentagon. Jim Hoffman and his 9-11 research site has mirrored the work of an anonymous blogger who constructed a mosaic of the damage at the Pentagon wall based on multiple photographs each of which showed part of the damage. It turns out that the size of the hole and other damage to the facade is consistent with a high-speed 757 impact. Another element to this discussion is the recognition of what a high-speed airplane impact actually looks like. In 1988, Sandia National Laboratories put an F-4 Phantom jet on a rocket sled and crashed it into a 10-foot thick reinforced concrete barrier to test the safety of nuclear energy facilities. The plane hit the wall at 480 miles per hour and it was turned into confetti. No large plane part survived. This is not the concrete you see billowing out, it's the plane. Only a few millimeters of this concrete, this reinforced stuff, got destroyed. The planes that hit the Twin Towers and the Pentagon were traveling even faster. A large plane at the same speed as this Phantom Jet would have the same amount of kinetic energy per kilogram. All of that energy would have to be dissipated to bring the plane to rest. If the Pentagon plane had hit an impermeable wall, we would have witnessed a rerun of the Phantom Jet experiment. However, the wall gave way, so the heavy parts of the plane went in, and a majority of the kinetic energy was dissipated, tearing up the inside of the building. The wingtips and tail that were blocked by the wall were, as in the Phantom experiment, turned to confetti leaving only small debris on the lawn. The no-plane frenzy was fed 
by the short sequence of frames from surveillance cameras at the Pentagon. There was the entrance into the frame of something fuzzy with a trail of smoke and then a blast. The smoke trail fueled speculation that it was a missile. Jets don't leave smoke trails, missiles do. These frames don't prove a 757 impact because we can't see the object clearly. But the question here is, can these frames rule out a 757? Careful modeling of the motion of the plane turns out to present a picture consistent with the location and size of the fuzzy object. And the smoke trail can plausibly be attributed to something being ingested by one of the engines. The maker of this animation suggests that it could be a globe from one of the struck light poles. There are other possibilities that I'll mention later. The question here is whether the smoke trail video could rule out a 757. The answer is no, since there are plausible mechanisms to generate the smoke trail, and since the overall size and shape of the fuzzy blob are consistent with a 757 at this distance. The burden of proof has not been met. The geometry works out just fine for a 757 to clear the lawn and still enter the Pentagon consistent with the damage pattern. By the way, those blue areas are areas where there's facade damage, and that's where the light areas like the tail and the wing tips hit, but the red area shows where all of the heavy parts of the plane, there's room for them to go in. Early photographs show relatively little debris on the lawn. This was misleading because most of the photographs were taken from the roadway and the large distances appeared foreshortened. The lack of debris on the lawn was taken as evidence that there was no plane. As more photographs emerged, there was abundant evidence of plane debris, some of it uh, with what appears to be American Airlines markings. So an objection has been raised that most of the plane debris on the lawn was found closer to the helipad, which is to the left, or the north, of the impact point. This assertion is based on an incomplete photographic record, but assuming it's true, it's not surprising. When the plane struck the Pentagon, it hit at an angle of 52 degrees with respect to the Pentagon wall. Each part of the plane, therefore, had a component of its velocity parallel with the wall, of about 60% of its overall ground speed. After the collision, the average velocity of the many pieces of the plane that were pulverized but remained outside the building would still have significant northward velocity component due to conservation of momentum, which would carry it preferentially northward toward the heliport and fire station. Yes, there is much plane debris. Yes, the photographs that exist show most of it to the left of the entrance hole but that can be understood as a direct consequence of the geometry of the impact. We know the actual time of impact within seconds rather than minutes because the plane coming into the Pentagon was being tracked by multiple radar installations under the control of different agencies, some civilian, some military. During the final approach leading straight to the Pentagon, it was tracked by four different radar systems until it descended below the radar as it passed the Sheraton Hotel, which is about a kilometer from impact. Each radar blip carries its own precisely calibrated time signature, and these agree to high precision. There is also the flight data recorder found in the Pentagon, and the data from it is released under the Freedom of Information Act. 
Some question the authenticity of the FDR data, but I and others believe the data is authentic, based primarily on internal evidence. That's a separate discussion. For now, let me say the FDR and radar data agree. Yes, there is plane litter on the lawn, but not enough to account for an entire plane. The vast majority of the plane debris from the actual plane went inside the Pentagon.
So what does the evidence actually show? We have the air traffic control recordings of communications with each of the four airliners throughout their flights. These were released under the Freedom of Information Act in 2011. They're available. These established that the flights actually existed, actually took off, and proceeded normally until they were taken over. We have overlapping radar. The primary radar that was real-time by the control towers had some glitches, but there were other radars monitoring the flight continuously, and the entire flight path of AA-77 was recorded. John Farmer has put this all together. Excellent research. We have overlapping radar data from multiple agencies for the entire flight of AA-77 from takeoff to a point within a mile of impact. The transponder was turned off at one point, but radar does not depend on the transponder signal. The radar data terminates as the plane descends to literally fly under the radar for the last kilometer or so. The radar data ends with the plane flying directly toward the hole in the Pentagon. We also have the flight data recorder data for the entire flight, right up to impact. The FDR data agrees well with the radar data. Some claim the data was faked but the data has a tremendous amount of internal complexity and has the feel of authentic data. My conclusion is the data is authentic, partially because it agrees with all the other sources of data. You can read the paper on the decoding of the FDR by Frank Legg and Warren Stutt at the Journal of 9-11 Studies. Here is the VDOT, the Virginia Department of Transportation, camera pole for traffic camera. It appears to have a rung missing and a scar. If this missing rung was actually knocked off by the plane, this is positioned approximately where the right wing tip would have run. If the missing run was actually knocked off by the plane, it would locate the position of the plane precisely to within a few inches. A fraction of a second later, you can see up at the top right where the rung is missing, and then notice the top of that tree. So a fraction of a second later, the starboard engine appears to have cut a circular notch out of the top of the foliage of a tree standing beside the roadway. If the starboard engine actually clipped and ingested the foliage from the top of the tree, it could account for the smoke cloud seen in the Pentagon security camera video. The Pentagon plane was moving at about 550 miles per hour in the last seconds. It was accelerating as it went into the Pentagon. Immediately after trimming the tree, the plane impacted the light pole that pierced the windshield of a taxi driven by Lloyd England, nearly killing him and causing his taxi to swerve and stop traffic. Both Lloyd and the taxi should be listed as witnesses to the plane. Lloyd in the human eyewitness sense and the taxi in the sense of a physical detector in physics. The taxi is evidence that the light pole damaged happened in real time as the plane approached. It could not have been pre-planted evidence. And by the way, as far as the force needed to dislodge these, the bolts that attach these things to the ground are like fuses. They break off easily, so if a car hits one, it, it breaks off the pole instead of killing the passengers. If the light pole had been dislodged by some other kind of elaborate explosive scheme, Lloyd and the other travelers who witnessed the event would have testified to an unusual explosion, but they didn't. They witnessed the terror of a very large, very low aircraft nearly colliding with their cars at very high speed. The plane continued to mow down four more light poles, five in all. equal significance is that it failed to mow down several others. The distribution of hit poles establishes the minimum wingspan at about 100 feet. 
and the path between the remaining poles establishes a maximum wingspan of 140 feet. The actual wingspan of a 757 is 124 feet 10 inches. So at minimum, we can say the light pole evidence is consistent with a 757. It is not known how much damage the impacts with the light poles caused to the wings. The plane was essentially projectile by that time and would collide with the Pentagon with or without wings. We do know, however, the wings, at least out to the engines, stayed intact because of what came next. As the plane hit the building, it was tilted slightly to the left. The right engine collided with the top corner of a very heavy generator trailer, causing the generator to rotate clockwise, moving the north end of the generator toward the Pentagon. The left engine hit a low concrete wall, leaving a circular scar. The lateral spacing between these two collision points matches the distance between the engines of a 757. It is worth mentioning that the rotation of the generator trailer is significant in proving an actual impact. that does, did not happen was a collision with the cable spools that were sitting on the lawn. It turns out the geometry of the impact allowed the plane to clear the spools. The clear progression of events is toward the Pentagon. The simplest explanation for all the evidence, and in fact the only explanation that has been attempted to account for all of the external damage in detail, is an impact by a plane the size of a 757. The plane entered the Pentagon primarily at the first floor level. Beyond the wall of the Pentagon, there is significant photographic evidence and oral testimony of first responders to the damage inside, including testimonies about bodies and airplane parts. The damage does not resemble an explosion. Columns are bowed and abraded, showing evidence of a flow of material in line with the flight path. The plane would have been shredded by this time, but the momentum of the debris carried it forward past the interior columns in a manner similar to the flow of a fluid. When I, when I say that, what I'm saying is particles interacting with each other as they're moving forward. It's not saying they're liquid or anything like that. That's a misinterpretation that some people put on it. The flow of material broke through the sea ring and dumped debris, including a tire and other airplane parts, into the alley between the B and C rings. The distribution of debris outside the sea ring was aligned with the motion of the plane. Much has been made of the roundness of the sea ring hole. My colleague John Cole did an interesting study of the hole itself in detail. The hole is not round. The hole is irregular, if you look at it here. Only the surface bricks have the rounded appearance, more like a rounded cornered rectangle, really. The appearance suggests that something broke through from the inside out and tension forces pulled the surface bricks away, giving the rounded look. Notice that there is a vertical pipe that survives crossing the hole. If the hole were created by an explosive charge, the pipe would not have survived. If we step back and look at the event as a whole, the radar path, the FDR path, the path testified to by the vast majority of witnesses, the exterior damage path, the interior damage path, the sea ring hole, and the stream of debris dumped into the alleyway, all align perfectly. This confluence of evidence is so striking that any alternative theory must explain these alignments convincingly. No alternative theory to the large plane hypothesis comes even close to doing so. There are many questions to be asked. Kevin Ryan has compiled a good list of questions we should be asking. 
One of the questions on the list, which I consider the primary question, is how was the nation's air defense system disabled on 9-11? How could anything have hit the Pentagon approximately 80 minutes after the first plane was known to be hijacked? With all the new information we now have, the question, what hit the Pentagon, has essentially been answered. It's a large plane, consistent with a 757, probably a A-77 itself. The evidence is in, and it is time for the truth movement to unite around evidence and refuse to be swayed by speculation. The clearest evidence that the Pentagon attack was an inside job is not to be found at the Pentagon at all. The clearest evidence that the Pentagon attack was an inside job is that the World Trade Center attack can be shown with a firm scientific basis to have been an inside job. And the Pentagon attack was clearly part of the same operation. Thank you.